Now in this lesson we're going to be talking about the human colonization of the solar system. We're going to talk about which planets you might want to colonize, uh, what challenges you might face, and what techniques you might use to overcome them. But before we get into all these details, it might be worth spending a bit of time thinking, is this even a good idea? Is colonization of the solar system really a good and moral thing to be doing? Now in England, where I grew up, this is a country that colonised large parts of the world, and colonisation was often seen as quite a good thing. We had statues of explorers and pioneers. The same in settler colonies like Australia or the United States. Uh, there are most towns are named after pioneers and explorers. There are plenty of statues of these things around. It's taught in the, as often as a good thing in the school curriculum. But for many people, both here in Australia and around the world, colonisation is actually seen as not good at all. So to help me discuss these issues, I'm going to be talking to my colleague Carly Noon. She's an astronomer here at the ANU, and she's also a proud woman of the Camilleroy Nation. Let's go meet her. So Carly, thank you for joining me here. Now, can you explain why colonisation is seen as such an immoral thing by so many people around the world? Yeah, absolutely. So I think exploration in general is not necessarily a bad thing, right? That's how we discover, you know, how the world works and what is inside the Earth. Uh, so inherently, exploration is not a bad thing. But when exploration is combined with things like land dispossession, slavery, racist ideologies, uh, land destruction, then that's when it does become quite, a, quite an immoral practice. I think uh, Australia is a really great example of this. Certainly the atrocities that were um, endured by First Nations people here. But I think also the native species is also a really, uh, really highlights this point. Uh, since the time of colonization 230 years ago, we've experienced a lot of extinction here with our native species. And this is largely due to colonial practices, say introduced species, for example, uh, such as feral cats. Other causes are things like land exploitation, things like mining, um, and these things are not practices that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people were conducting prior to colonisation. And so when we combine that with the, the horrible atrocities that uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people also endured, then yes, colonisation is quite immoral. So I guess you're saying that you, in the past when humans have colonised They've done a pretty horrible job of it. But surely it's going to be a bit different if colonised the solar system. I mean, we know there are no aliens out there in the solar system to be dispossessed by the evil human colonisers. And in fact, in most of the solar systems, not even any living things whatsoever. Absolute tops, there might be a few microbes deep below the subsurface of Mars and in the oceans beneath Europa, but nothing more than bacteria out there. So does that make a difference? Yeah, so I think to some extent it, it could potentially make a difference, but I'm kind of of the opinion that we don't really know. We don't really know what's out there. We only really have one sample size of what life looks like on a planet or what a habitable planet looks like. And so my, my problem, I guess, is that yes, there may be uh, single cell organisms on these planets that we know of, but what is to say that that single cell organism could not evolve into a more complex uh, organism that would eventually potentially lead to more complex life? I guess the picture we're seeing here is perhaps you know, um, that we have this beautiful pristine environment, um, a bit like the movie Avatar, and then the humans come in and despoil and turn it all into some wasteland. But in our own solar system, I mean, if you think about the worst wastelands on Earth, so radioactive zones around Chernobyl or horrible mines or polluted air, these are still paradise compared to most places in our own solar system. I mean, even the most polluted places on Earth, you can still at least partially breathe the air, which is not possible anywhere else. The radiation on one of Jupiter's moons would make the middle of a nuclear reactor on Earth seem like a very benign environment. So can we really make things any worse than they already are out there? Yeah, I think that's a really, really great point. I think when we think about our actions as humanity in the past, 
we've made very similar assumptions in that uh, say lands are not inhabited. That was certainly the case for Australia um, when it was first visited upon, it was claimed as being uninhabited when of course we know there were tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here. So I think it's something that we shouldn't be so quick to assume. I also think in the overall picture, in the overall system that we are positioned in, our solar system, we could be creating uh, consequences or impacts that we have no understanding of. So for example, if say a meteorite didn't crash into Earth, you know, about 4 billion years ago, we may not have oceans on Earth. So I think we just, we don't really have the full picture of what our impacts could be. And there's also uh, a question of what we're trying to achieve here. I mean, we might think that uh, some vacuum peak on moon is valueless to us uh, but it has a beauty and a grandeur in itself and maybe a spiritual value that uh, maybe we ignore at our peril and of course you certainly worry that whatever our good intentions to begin with when there's money to be made people will just throw them out the window and despoil things I guess like all these things, it depends, it's complicated. We don't know what's going to happen. Absolutely, Paul. These are really difficult questions to answer. And this topic in particular can be quite divisive for, for different people, depending on where you're coming from. But I think the important thing is, is that the scientific community keep the discussions open. Thank you for that. But let's keep the conversation going somewhere else on campus, shall we? Yeah, let's do it.